In this episode, I'd like to share with you some of the updates that I've made to this John Deere 3020 tractor. We recently picked up this tractor and it seems like a pretty good machine. But one of the reasons why we were able to get it at a good price was because the electrical system was pretty messed up. The tractor mechanically seems pretty good. The engine, transmission, all of that sort of thing. It runs, it works well, but the electrical system had a lot of problems. It wasn't charging the battery. And there's wires all over this thing that terminate into nothingness. Uh, that's a problem that I figured I can probably handle. And the first issue that I wanted to tackle was getting the battery charging system working, because that's pretty important. If that isn't working, and I'm running the tractor out in the field somewhere, the battery is being continuously depleted by the ignition system to provide power to keep the engine running. And when the battery gets depleted enough, the tractor will stop and leave me stranded somewhere. So I figured that wasn't such a good situation. So I wanted to get the battery charging system fixed. Now the original battery charging system in the tractor uses a John Deere generator, which, um, one of these. It's a DC generator and it puts out approximately 20 amps of power and it is then connected to a mechanical voltage regulator to control the amount of voltage coming out of the generator that gets sent back to the battery to keep the battery in a properly charged state. I suspected that the problem with this tractor was a defective voltage regulator. And then because of that, other people had disconnected wires and all the wires were disconnected, including the fuel tank sender, so the gas gauge didn't work and such. And so my initial thought was to replace the regulator. Now these mechanical regulators have a series of electrical contacts in them that chatter at a high speed in order to control the electrical output and keep the average output at approximately the right voltage. And those contacts, because they're chattering and making and breaking at high speed, they get burned after a while. And you could probably go in here and clean up the contacts, file them down a little bit and get the thing operating again. But in my experience, when you start filing on contacts, that's the beginning of the end and chances are you'll probably be back in there in six months having to redo that job because once you start filing the contacts their longevity just doesn't seem so great so the next solution would be to replace this regulator unit and this is about a 75 dollar part but i decided not to do that i decided instead to put in an automotive alternator and it was to me a no-brainer solution because the automotive alternator has a built-in regulator which is solid state and doesn't have those issues with contacts and it regulates power much better than those old mechanical regulators do also an automotive alternator is capable of putting out a lot more power than the old john deere generator unit um, the typical alternator that is suggested for this application is a AC Delco 10SI, which puts out about 60 amps of power, as opposed to the 20 that the John Deere generator can put out. And with the amount of lights that we have on this tractor, I figure that 20 amps is marginal at best, whereas a 60 amp output would be much more comfortable and provide adequate power to run the tractor. However, I decided not to use the 10SI alternator that's recommended by so many and instead use a AC Delco Remy CS130. And the reason I chose the CS130 is because it's a new generation alternator. It's capable of about 100 amps of output and it's got better voltage regulation. So when you idle down the tractor at low RPMs, the alternator is more likely to be able to put out consistent power. Whereas some of the older alternators, you had to get the throttle up just a little bit to get the engine moving fast enough so the regu regulator inside of the alternator could kick in and provide stable power. So I put in a CS130, which is mechanically 
a very similar package to the 10 SI and it should bolt up into the same mounting locations um, and actually the depth is a little tiny bit shorter so I'll take pull you in here a little bit and show you the uh, installation and uh, walk you through what I had to do in order to get an automotive alternator installed into the John Deere 3020 Okay, so here is the CS130 alternator mounted up, and uh, it's probably a little bit hard to see in the video here, but I had to acquire a new bracket to mount the alternator to the engine. And the old bracket that mounted the generator just wasn't mechanically the right size for the alternator. And unfortunately, the bracket that I had acquired would not allow me to move this alternator forward enough to get proper straight belt alignment which is pretty critical if you don't want to burn up belts so what i had to do was do some grinding and cutting on the bracket to make the slots a little bit longer so i could slide it more forward and back actually more forward to get that belt to line up and even after doing as much grinding as i could i still couldn't get enough forward motion so i ended up grinding down the tab on the alternator of significant amount so I could slide this whole mechanism forward and get proper belt alignment. And so that was a little bit of effort there to get that lined up. The other thing to be aware of on this tractor is that the belt from the alternator goes down to the engine pulley and between there is a shaft that operates the front hydraulic pump. And the front shaft and the back shaft meet up with a coupler that wraps around the two of them. And there's two bolts that you have to remove, one on the top, one on the bottom, and you can separate that coupler. And then those two shafts um, can be rotated a bit to allow the belt to move through those things to replace the belt. So I had to get underneath the tractor with a wrench and break those things loose and uh, take care of that coupling. Not a huge issue, except that on an old tractor, it seems like all of the nuts and bolts are rusted and tight. Then, as far as this alternator goes for the wiring, I have off the back of the alternator, let me move the camera over so you can see better, hopefully, we have the main power output, which is this terminal right back here. And I ran a fresh piece of 10 gauge automotive wire from that up and out, dressed it in nicely, and that runs directly to the battery. And then in addition, off of the mounting bracket, the whole alternator body is ground. So it should be grounded to the, the engine and the frame, and that should provide a good ground. But just to be sure, I ran another 10 gauge wire from the mounting bracket for ground also back to the battery. So I know I've got a really solid connection between the alternator and the battery. This alternator is good for 100 amps, and so I want to make sure that I have really good conductivity and continuity back to the battery that can handle large amounts of current. So I have a pair of 10 gauge wires going from the alternator that go directly to the battery terminals. The other connections that we need are on this connector right here, and it's a four pin connector uh, the first pin is a tachometer output, which we don't care about, so I'll just leave that wire. The second pin is an output labeled L, which goes to an indicator lamp that's on the dash. And positive power goes to that lamp, then down this wire, and energizes the alternator. And that is enough to get the alternator running and it provides an indication up on the dash as to whether or not the system is charging. So when you first start the vehicle, that indicator blinks a bit as the alternator comes up to power and then it extinguishes and you know that all is good. Uh, the downside of that single wire connection is that should your light bulb on the dash burn out, it will not be providing energy into the regulator in the alternator and the alternator will not turn on and it won't be charging the system and you won't have an indicator on the dash because your light bulbs burned out so you probably would never realize it so in addition to that there's um, the i wire the next wire on here which i have connected to 
a switched 12 volt power coming off of the key switch and so when you turn the key on the ignition on it energizes that lead with 12 volt power to energize the alternator so the alternator can come up and then the fourth wire on the alternator connector is a sense wire which just gets jumpered right around over to the output terminal and that is the voltage sensing for the regulator to make sure that it's putting out the correct voltage. So that's just a little quick jumper from the alternator connector right over to the output post to the alternator. And with that wired in place, it works great. It gives me a steady 14 volt output um, at engine idle. And as I bring up the engine RPMs, the voltage output remains perfectly consistent right around 14 volts. And so that fixes the charging issues on the tractor and like i mentioned this alternator cs130 is capable of about 100 amps of output maximum and so that should be plenty of output to run all of the lights and any other electrical accessories i can imagine i'd want to install on the tractor so it's a pretty simple installation except for getting this mounting bracket and the alternator mounting position to be forward enough for proper belt alignment with the other pulleys. So the next adventure with the tractor is getting the lights working. And we'll cover that in the next video.